Hey everybody, this is S. Von Gill and I'm a wedding and fashion photographer based in Guilford, Connecticut. And today, I'm gonna give you a behind the scenes look at how I've incorporated Aftershoot's new retouching features and how it's helped me saving time without any compromises to my work. So, let's get started. Okay, so after we've gone into Aftershoot, we've imported, we've culled, and then we've edited. So I personally edit with my, uh, my own profile, which is available on the marketplace. It's called Leo. Uh, and after I do that, I'm gonna export the images into Lightroom Classic to make any final adjustments to, or at least global adjustments. And when I'm done doing that, I'm just going to bring them into Aftershoot. For the sake of the video, I'm just gonna do three images. So I'm gonna select all these images. I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna edit in and I'm gonna edit into Aftershoot. So once I do that, it's gonna create a copy and it's gonna bring it into Aftershoot. So once it goes into Aftershoot, it's going to import JPEG. So just keep in mind that right now we're only working with JPEGs. Uh, so now that I have all three images here that I wanna retouch, I'm just gonna select one just to do some checking on the skin. So this definitely needs some retouching. So two years ago, I would have been, I mean, I would have spent probably 15, 20 minutes retouching, doing patch tool, which you do have. You do have a patch tool here, but now there's so many different things that you can do with an aftershoot that's gonna just save you so much time. So just to give a quick uh, outlook of what this looks like, uh, you have your quick filters that you can sort through. Uh, you have your before and after. You have your image info, which it is just a regular exit data. Um, and then this is the important part here. So I do recommend that when you do start your first retouching journey with Aftershoot, just go through every single thing and then just try to go to extremes, try to go to lower in the numbers just to see how it reacts. So I mean, just moving this to 59 and 60%, I mean, it already looks significantly better than what the before looked like. So, I mean, this is really just only two things, acne and freckles. It's not even going into into any forehead wrinkles or eye bags or any smile lines or anything like that. So um, just to, to change up these two things, it looks incredible. So um, I like to stick at around 30 to 50% for pretty much everything. Uh, so some blemishes here. Uh, if you didn't like the, the forehead wrinkle, you can go in and, and do some retouching to the, the forehead wrinkle. But I personally, I don't know, I like it. I think that, that especially when it comes to men's fashion, it's it's gonna be good, so. And then you can do a ton of stuff. I mean, teeth brightening, you could do face brightening, you could do face shine removal. If you're using off camera flash, and you wanna get rid of a lot of that shiny stuff on, on very shiny uh, skin tones, then you can do that. Uh, I don't personally need this right now, but, uh, but it is something that is really good to have, so. Uh, glass glare, uh, stray hair removal, if you wanted to do that. Uh, my favorite thing is that I can actually create a custom preset. So uh, let's say that I wanted to create a, if I finished editing this uh, this model here and retouching their skin, then what I'm gonna do, instead of having to do this every single time, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit this button right here and create a new preset. And I'm just gonna name it uh, uh, Fashion Men's Preset uh, 10. And then I'm gonna create that preset. And then what I'll do is I'll actually be able to select all these images. This will be the master image. And then I'm gonna sync three photos. And it's gonna apply this preset to all the images that I'd like. If I take a look, this is what the afters look like. And now this is a before. So again, one of the most important things about aftershoot is it's a subtle changes need to make them look like porcelain dolls. Uh, I think the, one of the biggest mistakes that we do once we have retouching tools is that everyone's going to start looking fake. But in reality, you really don't have to do a ton in order to make them look, look good and realistic. So I go to 300%. You can go here. Look at that. That looks amazing. This is basically exactly how I would deliver this image. It still looks like it's natural. It still looks like it belongs there without it looking overly done. I mean, I'm gonna start using this pretty much every every uh, session that I have, whether it's fashion, whether it's weddings. Um, I was always I was always very adamant about not being a, a retoucher when it came to, came to weddings, but because it's so subtle, um, I definitely think I'm gonna incorporate it into my, into my workflow. So really excited to, uh, to see where this goes and all the changes that are gonna be coming up and all the, uh, all the people, I can't wait to see all the people that are using this. So that's pretty much it.